and worship the almighty God the king of kings the lord of lords the one who was the one who is the one who is to come the one that kept you all throughout last month the one that did not allow January to see your end but brought you and crossed you over into the month of February can you lift up your voice and thank him for Johnny mercies can you lift up your voice and thank him for the mercy of the Lord the Bible says it is by the lost mercy that we are not consumed let's appreciate him let him hear your voice of gratitude your voice of appreciation your voice of adoration your voice of worship this morning brethren let God hear your voice of worship, Mazupanda, Breda, Cassandra, Librande. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have worship. I thought somebody would say a better amen. amen. Uh, kindly rise on your feet. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Just one prayer point you want to pray very quickly this morning. Lift up your two hands and say, Father, you can do better. Say, Father. All the days of my life make me a beneficiary of the wonders of your mercy. Can you lift up your voice and cry to the Almighty God that all the days of your life, the Lord will make you a beneficiary of the wonders of His mercy. Go ahead, talk to Him this morning. Oh, my Ribra Casantalia, we are talking about the merciful God this month. The merciful God, the God that is so merciful, the God that performs wonders with his mercy, the Lord that performs wonders with his mercy. Oh man, Libra Gazapa Lema Shentele, Geligla Eka Pakusa Pota Brande Gazantali. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we are praying. In that name that is above every other name, wherever my father can locate the loudest, amen. You will forever be a beneficiary of the wonders of his mercy in the name of Jesus. Throughout this month and beyond, for that fellow that can say amen louder than his than, than his neighbor, I decree mercy of God will never depart from you. Mercy of God will never depart from your family. God will prove himself as a merciful God in your life in the name of Jesus. And if you are that fellow, let him hear your amen. Three powerful times. One to go. Amen. Two. Amen. And amen. can you jam those hands together for the Almighty God and make a joyful noise unto the Lord? I say, go ahead, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. We are all most welcome in Jesus' name. You can please be seated as king and queens in his presence. I am excited to see every one of us this morning are gorgeously dressed. My prayer for you is that the glory of God that is radiating in your life will never go dim in the name of Jesus. And I want to thank the Almighty God for preserving us to see the second month, the month of February. Can you jam your hands together for the Almighty God? And the Lord has given us the team for the month of February as the merciful God. Uh, we started this since last week, Monday, 1st of February. We've been looking at the merciful God. We look at the day of mercy. We look at the wonders of his mercy. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be having an anointing service early in the morning. And uh, I encourage you 
If you are not in haste tomorrow to go to the office, don't miss tomorrow morning. I told you that we're here on Friday, and I'm repeating it to us now because of the revelation of God that we receive concerning how you can activate his mercy by anointing. And if you are not able to follow us online, both our Facebook, our radio, and uh, our web page. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I say the Almighty God bless you in Jesus' name. This morning, I just want to talk briefly on the merciful God. And I want to spend just 15 minutes so that we can have time to do other things. As a matter of fact, 15 minutes is luxury for me this morning. If I can do it 10 minutes, I think it's better for me. So that we don't exceed the 9 o'clock so that we can actually enjoy the second service with our Father in the law. Our text is taken from the book of Psalm 116 verse 5. We are talking about the merciful God. Psalm 116 verse 5 says, Gracious is the law and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. As a matter of fact, that is the scripture for this month. That is the scripture for the theme of this month. Gracious is the Lord and righteous Yea, our God is merciful. Beloved brethren, our God is not only merciful, the Bible made us to know that he's rich in mercy. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4. The Bible says, but God who is rich in mercy, not only is he rich in mercy, this God is the father of mercy. Our God is the Father of mercy. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us. Our God have mercy in abundance. And to crown it all, because we serve a merciful God, the book of Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 and 23 made us to know that it is by his mercy that we are not consumed. It is by his mercy that we are not consumed. This God is so merciful that he performs wonders with his mercy. According to Psalm 130, Psalm 136, verses 4, Psalm 136 is actually uh, 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 the Bible book that is dedicated to how merciful our God is. And we're going to be citing a lot of scripture from that psalm this morning. Psalm 136, verse 4. It says, To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercies endure forever. I know it's not a strange thing for us to know that God is merciful. But the question this morning is what do you stand to benefit? As a child of God, from the mercies of God, I'll just run through a few of them that I can, and then I spend some time on how can you actually receive this mercy from the merciful God. Beloved, the Bible says it is by the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. In other words, we are in a war we are there are adverse forces that are fighting our lives. As a matter of fact, you sitting down here today is because of the mercy of God. Let to your enemy, you will have slept and not wake up. Let to your enemy, they are even wishing you that you will die. Praise the Lord. Let to your enemy, they must have taken your name to places just either to hinder your progress, either to deal with you, and what have you. But the Bible says, by the Lord's mercy, we are not what? Consumed. Can I pray for only one person in the house? In that name that is above every other name, it doesn't matter how hard your enemy try, their weapon will not prosper over you in the name of Jesus. Because by his mercy, you will not be consumed. If you are that fellow, say a louder amen. amen. And that takes us to the number two point. That the mercy of God rescue us from the misery and the afflictions of life. Brethren, the Bible says sufficient for a day is the trouble thereof. There are a lot of things happening on a daily basis. Praise the Lord. But by the mercy of God, we are rescued. 
Mercy pull us out of affliction. Mercy pull us out of penury. Mercy pull us out of poverty. Mercy pull us out of lack. Mercy pull us out of failure. Mercy pull us out of frustration. Mercy pull us out of retrogression. Mercy pull us out of backwardness. These are mysteries of life. Mercy can pull you out of barrenness. Things that can make a man's life miserable. When the mercy of God come, the mercy of God pull you out of them. Can I pray for you, sir? Anyone trying to make your life miserable, in that name that is above every other name, the mercy of God will pull you out. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Amen. The life of Bartimaeus was miserable. Miserable because he was blind, he was covered with darkness. Miserable because he was poor, he was a beggar. Miserable because he has no more a, 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 a expectation in life. But the day came, he heard that the merciful God was strolling along the street of Jericho. And he began to cry for mercy. And the mercy of the Lord brought him out of darkness. Brought him out of poverty. Brought him out of lack. Listen to me, sir. We are talking about the merciful God this morning. And in that name that is above every other name. I don't know the misery in your life. The mercy of God will pull you out. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Amen. Beloved, I need to let you know this. As wonderful as mercy of God is to his, to his people. The mercy of God unleashed judgment on the enemy. Listen to me. If you find mercy before God, the implication of you finding mercy before God is that your enemies are in trouble. You didn't hear me, sir. Meaning, mercy of God to a child of God is judgment to the enemy of God. So if you find mercy, the implication is that God's judgment will come upon your enemy. Let's read this Bible passage very quickly. I don't have time, but I'm just trying to see how far I can go. Engineers, can you help me? Open to Psalm 136. I said we're going to spend some time on Psalm 136, but I don't have the time. Let's start from verse 17. You discover that the children of Israel, they find mercy, and then because they find mercy, God was unleashing judgment on their enemy. He says, to him, we smooth great kings. Why? For his mercy endured forever. Verse 18. And slew famous kings. Why? For his mercy endured. He was dealing with the enemy of the children of Israel. Because his mercy endured how? Forever. Verse 19. Verse 19, he says, Zion, king of the Amorite, for his mercy endured forever. Can you continue? Verse 20. And all the king of Bashan, why? For his mercy, what the Bible is saying that all these enemies of God that we are standing on the way of the children of Israel so that they will not get to the promised land because his mercy endureth forever, because the children of God have found mercy, judgment came upon each one of them. Stand on your feet, let me pray a prayer for you. Who will find mercy this morning? Lift up your two hands. Because the merciful God will show you mercy. Anyone that will stand on your way, the judgment of God will come upon them. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Yeah. I say if you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Yeah. Be seated for a minute. Brethren, it is the mercy of God that shields us from the consequences of our mistakes, from the consequences of our wrongdoings. If God were to judge us based on our disobedience, based on our unrighteousness, the Bible says, if God will mark iniquity, who can stand? It takes the mercy of God for us to be shielded from his own judgment. And that's why when you find the mercy of God, listen to me, it doesn't matter what the enemy are saying concerning you. It does not concern God. 
That was why the woman that was caught in, a, in, the, in, the, in, in adultery, the Pharisee said she, he, she was caught in the very act. Praise the Lord. But you know what? The trap was not for that woman. They brought the woman to, to Jesus saying she was caught in the act. Sir, is it one person that commit adultery? Eh? Is it only one person that commit fornication? If you say somebody commit adultery, they, how many are they supposed to be? So why do they brought lady woman? It was a setup. Set up against Jesus. Because they want to know whether Jesus will say, we go contrary to the law of mercy, or Jesus will say the woman did not commit sin. So they were hypocritical. Pharisees and Sadducees, they were hypocritical. And so Jesus was just looking down and was writing. And after he asked, he said, well, any of you that have no sin, throw the first stone, cast the first stone. One after the other, they began to drop their stone. And after Jesus raised his head, all of them were gone. Can I pray for you? All those that are accusing you before the throne of God, your God will disappoint them. Yeah. At the end of the day, Jesus asked, Woman, where are the accusers? Say, I also do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. The implication of it is that it's so that the mercy of God allow you to continue in sin. For the Bible says, can we continue in sin and grace we are born? God forbid. But mercy shield us from judgment. That's why if you sin against God and you can come to him and repent, he shield you. The mercy of God shield you. The mercy of God gives you a new beginning. Check our text online on the wonders of his mercy. Today, the Bible says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Why? Because of his mercy. I pray for somebody. You will enjoy his mercy. I say you enjoy his mercy. Sir, maybe I should give you this last one. Mercy of God is the last resort. I repeat. Mercy of God is the last resort to every woman problem. Last resort means solution. Brethren, when you have done everything you could, when you are passing through, when you have fasted, when you are bind and loose, when you have cast out demons, when you have done everything righteous, you have so seed, you have made a vow, nothing seems to work. Sir, ma, go before his altar. Humble yourself and say, Lord, I know nothing. I know not what to do. Just have mercy. None of us will say, Lord, just have mercy. I thought you would say loud and clear, Lord, just have mercy. Then the question is, who can benefit from his mercy as I close? Who can benefit from his mercy? Number one, those who fear God. Those who fear God. You want him to be merciful unto you? Fear him. According to uh, Psalm 103, verse 11. He said, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great his mercy toward them that fear him. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them. Sir, you want to benefit from this merciful God? Sir, fear him. Fear him. If you can fear him, you will enjoy his mercy. Number two, obey him. Those who will obey his commandment, we assess his mercy. Because the Bible says, the Lord keep his covenant of mercy to them that obey him. Psalm 25, verse 10. Psalm 25, verse 10. He says, all the part of the law are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Unto such that keep his covenant and his testimony. You want his mercy? Sir, show mercy to others. Some of us are hard-hearted. Nothing moves us. Somebody might even be dying be beside you. No sympathy, no empathy. No pity. Such fellow, it will be difficult for him to receive mercy. 
You want God's mercy? Show mercy to others. For the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 5 verse 7, Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, say, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So mercy. He said, be not deceived. God is not mock. Whatsoever a man so Galatians 6, 7, whatsoever a man so he will do what? He will reap. How do you treat those that come to you for assistance? How do you treat those that need your help? Show mercy and you will see the merciful God in action. Let me see if I can give you one more. If you can cry for mercy. How many of us want to cry for mercy? I say, how many of us want to cry for mercy? Bartimaeus cried for mercy and he received mercy. Who can cry for mercy? The one that is ready to repent. The one that is ready to surrender to Jesus. The one that is tired of sinful life will cry for mercy. The one that is tired of his situation, that is tired of his circumstances, that is tired of his unpleasant situation, will cry for mercy. Can we bow down our head? The first set of people I want to pray for very quickly are those that want to cry for his mercy unto repentance, unto the dedication of their life to him that is merciful. Brethren, the eyes of the Lord does not behold iniquity, but he can have mercy on you and give you a new beginning. And so if you are hearing me this morning, wherever you may be seated in the overflow, either the children's session, the teen session, uh, the canopies, or here in the main auditorium, you want God's mercy. Can you just wave your hand to heaven and I pray with you? God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. You want his mercy? Can you just raise your hand above your head? And then if you are raising your head, can you kindly stand up wherever you are? As you bow down your head, just stand wherever you are and begin to walk into the auditorium quickly so that I can just pray with you and we can close the service. Ushers, help me. I can't see the overflows. Is anybody, is anybody raising his hand? Please, if you are raising your hand, kindly begin to walk into the main auditorium. If you are under the canopy, ushers, help us. Help us one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Is anybody like that? You want to cry to God for mercy unto repentance or unto the dedication of your life to him. You are the only one to raise your hand above your head. Is anyone coming? Ushers, is anyone coming? Are you getting any signal? Is anyone coming? Thank you, Father. Is anyone? Hello, man, are you coming? Okay, okay, okay. Come quickly, come quickly. So I can pray with you. Any other person? Any other person? You want to cry for mercy? The first cry of mercy you need to cry is cry of mercy unto repentance. A cry of mercy unto forgiveness of sin. Mighty and everlasting Father, I want to thank you for your daughter that you single her out out of this crowd here today unto mercy. Lord, pardon all her iniquity and transgressions. Wash her by the blood. Give her a new beginning that Lord, at your returning, she will reign with you. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. I just want to say a better amen. Congratulations, man. Kindly follow that, my sister. One minute, they have one or two things to share with you. The rest of all, can we please rise on our feet? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Wave those hands to heaven and say, Father, I thank you because you are the merciful God. Lord, I worship you because you are the merciful God. Your mercy endure forever. You are rich in mercy. By your mercy, we are not consumed. Just appreciate him. Just appreciate him. Just appreciate him. Just give him glory. Just give him honor. Just give him adoration. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Now lift up your two hands. I don't know what your own needs are. We have just prayed with those that need salvation. You may need fruitfulness. You may need a breakthrough. You may need promotion. You may need a touch. You may need God to do something. I told us earlier, I said, cry for mercy is a last resort. Is a solution to all our numerous challenges, all our numerous trouble. If only he will have mercy. Lift up your two hands and mention your own case and say, Father, oh, you can do better. Say, Father, listen to me. There were a lot of crowd in Jericho, but 
the voice of Bartimaeus alone was the one that was heard. Even though they were telling him, keep short, keep short. The Bible said he cried the more. I am trusting God that your own cry will be heard in heaven now. Say, Father! Say, Father! Have mercy on me! And said to me today, can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? Have mercy on me and prosper me. Have mercy on me and make a way for me. Have mercy on me and heal me. Have mercy on me and deliver me. Have mercy on me and lift me up. Have mercy on me and, 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 and intervene in my case. Go ahead and talk to the Almighty God. I don't know what you want him to do for you. The mercy of God is a last resort. The mercy of God is solution to every challenge. You lift up your voice and ask him for mercy. Ask this God for mercy. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Before I pray for you, I want you to know one of the ways to enjoy his mercy is your thanksgiving. And so when it is time for thanksgiving, brethren, give God thanks for the mercy you have enjoyed before and in anticipation for the one you are expecting. Set forth your hand to the altar. Whatever you have cried to God for mercy for, before this will be over, let God prove himself as merciful God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three powerful women. One to go. Two. Three. Four. <laughs> let somebody shout hallelujah. Put your hand together for Jesus. There is always a day of visitation. As I was just right now, I didn't know that the the one that I'm standing in for here, this puppy does not belong to me. Praise God. It belongs to my boss. And now my boss is in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Daddy, you are welcome, sir. Uh, you will bless your children. What we will just do, sir? Just give us five minutes. Our son will come. We want to do the general thanksgiving. And then you now pronounce blessing on us. Thank you, Daddy. Pastor Toyo, look with me. The PICP.